I'm Derek Matthews. And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this episode, we'll preview the county fair this weekend and tell you about some improvements to local bus routes. But first, making headlines this week. Anne Arundel United is here. This week, County Executive Steve Shue unveiled a program aimed at ending, ending racism and hatred. He made the announcement at the Annapolis and Anne Arundel County Boys and Girls Club and explained just what the United Group will do. We will launch Anne Arundel United, a community outreach campaign program overseen by Derek Matthews to engage every citizen and community in the fight against racism through a community ambassador program, which will be a volunteer corps charged with addressing incidents of racial controversy and bringing communities together to better understand one another's perspectives. Now we need everybody to participate in this effort in order for it to really work. Call 410-222-1785 and please sign up to become an ambassador. You will receive specialized training from my wonderful co-host here, Derek Matthews on how to respond to high profile events in the community and how to facilitate meetings to have open dialogue about issues of race. Take a look at this promo from Arundel TV. Why do adults yell and fight so much? When will they learn? Hey, listen people, we need to work together. We have to love each other, stand up to racism, understand? Can I get an Anne Arundel United? Anne Arundel United! Not bad, we're gonna practice this every day until you get it right. Anne Arundel United! So Derek, this is your baby. Yes, you opened up the press conference with the question, and what question was that? Well, the question was very simple, as I asked everybody in the audience, what are you doing as an individual to make things better? That's a really good question. <laughs> you know, and, Did uh, folks respond, or were they kind of just staring well, off? I asked them to think about it. I didn't ask them to blurt it out, but I wanted to put it on their mind so they could think about it as we went through the program. And then I closed with another question. And what was that question? Which was now, what are you willing to do that you've heard everything that we've said today. I like it. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. So you gave me a really awesome sticker, actually, before we started recording. Yes, yes, so I you're did. getting some promo stuff printed up as well. Yeah, so we're going to do a lot of promo stuff. But what we did is that day, we basically asked everybody to join hands to give the room a good feeling of let's start today. So Love we had it. everybody raise their hand, turn to their neighbor and say, we are united, my brother, my sister, whoever's hand you were holding. And then we raised our hands high all together and said, we are united. And ultimately, we wanted everybody to leave with the feeling that everybody should be an ambassador of peace and goodwill. Everybody and every county employee should be an ambassador of what it is our message from Steve Shue is about Anne Arundel County being such a great place to work and live. I think that's something we can all yeah. get behind. And again, if you want to become an ambassador, call 410-222-1785. So I have a question for you. Question for me. Yeah. Do yes. you like oysters? I love oysters. Wow. Do you? Well, this I do. I, I do. do. Okay. I do. I yeah. like them. I like them. Oyster Rockefeller. I oh. like them raw. I love fried oysters. Fried oysters. Yeah, yeah the fried <laughs> oysters. Yeah. Well, this week, County Executive Steve Shu teamed up with the House of Delegates Speaker Mike Bush to kick off the 2017 Marylanders Grow Oysters Program. The program encourages waterfront property owners to hang cages of baby oysters from their docks. The oysters are delivered to a central location each year, sometime around September, and each year they're distributed. When they're all grown up and they're big oysters, they are placed into a sanctuary reef, and I guess you can't eat them then. No, you know, but, probably shouldn't eat them then. But uh, <laughs> here's what Steve and Abel had to say about the program. As you know, oysters are a critical species to the bay. Not only do they filter water um, but they also provide valuable habitat for marine life. Um, and they also are a keystone element of the bay's economy with the Maryland watermen um, being able to harvest those oysters both through the wild fishery and also through aquaculture. Um, so it's a great time. And being here today and you know, witnessing you know, the 10th year of this program is also very enlightening just to see how the public really engages with a program that is making a difference. If you want to find out more about the Oyster Recovery Partnership, go to oysterrecovery.org. 
Are you hungry now, Chris? Ah, you know it. And the Oyster Recovery Partnership, they are wonderful folks. If folks out there don't know, we also use a contract with ORP okay. uh, through the recycling division. Okay. We have uh, collection bins at all of the county recycling centers awesome. to collect oyster shell. Awesome. So they are wonderful folks. They do their Mermaid Kiss event every year, which helps raise money for this wonderful program. And a lot of the um, Annapolis downtown restaurants are involved. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks are really getting into recycled shell, wow. so I'm excited about this you program. You know, I just had a, a quick thought memory lane. Growing up uh, back and forth on the Eastern Shore, my father had a restaurant, yeah. and I would see oyster shells piled up like bulldozer high, and we'd bring them home, and they would go down in our driveway, and that's what our driveway was. We had a long, shells, long yeah. driveway, and that's what would be crushed and be our driveway for a oh, long wow. time. That's exciting to grow up in that kind of, yeah. having a restaurant in the family. Yeah, right on the water, that's which is awesome. uh, now another prominent place. But nice. uh, yeah, it was awesome. Very fun. So that's my memory of oysters and shells. I, I've seen that uh, before with crushed shells and driveways over at beach and shore properties. Mm -hmm, so that's, mm -hmm, that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. That's good. Well, no doubt you have heard about our efforts to spread the word about ending heroin addiction. This week, we took the fight to a new group, the clergy. Annapolis Mayor Mike Pantelides and County Executive Shu hosted the event Breaking the Silence this week, and more than 250 people showed. The goal of the event was to get local clergy to learn about addiction and speak out in their churches, synagogues, and mosques. Lisa Hillman told her personal story about her son, Jake, who is now six years sober. She said churches have been key in his sobriety. So my very first thank you to those of you who are in the clergy can make decisions is to thank you for opening up your rooms to those of us who need al -Anon. AA meetings take place in churches all over the world. You've got a leg up on everybody else in this disease. So thank you so much for that. Meanwhile, my son is continuing his sobriety in Florida. I am very proud to say uh, no credit to me, certainly, but to something, to something, that today he is five and a half years clean. What a great message, Derek. The easiest thing someone can do to get help is just to ask, go to a meeting. That, that's true, and, and that's, yeah. that's kind of where my question went to the crowd yesterday. Yeah. You know, what are you willing to do? And it's sometimes it's just as simple as taking a step to get involved. And I think it's important to turn out to events like this because it's good to feel like you have a community and it, it also is. makes you more accountable. It is, so. it is, and accountability is key. Yeah. Accountability is key. I'm glad to hear that the clergy is, is so involved in this. I think they're looking for any routes they can to try and fight this fight, That's and this true. is something that they just hadn't considered Absolutely. yet. It's gonna be Absolutely. great. So. Absolutely. We're going to take a quick break now, but when we come back, we will talk to Ramon Robinson about what the county is doing to improve the bus service. Take a look at our community calendar and see what's happening around town. We'll be right back. wait. Communicate. Make your emergency plan today. Welcome back. Joining us in the studio this week, we're delighted to have Mr. Ramon Robinson, Director of Transportation for the County. Ramon, welcome back to the studio. Thank you for nice having me. Nice to see you. Good to see you all. Now give good us the, yes, yes, Derek, Ramon, always, Ramon. Always. Yes. Yes. We're, very <laughs> we're very close. We're very close. Uh, let's get a brief overview about bus service in the county. You've got three main routes here in Anne Arundel, right? Right. So in Anne Arundel County, it's very unique because our bus service or transit service is provided by not only um, 
Regional Transportation Agency of Central Maryland, but also the Maryland Transit Administration, as well as Annapolis Transit. So you've got three providers that cohesively are providing transit service for one Anne Arundel County. Hmm. I know, right? It's yeah. A lot. <laughs> a lot of people keep exactly. track of. <laughs> so what is changing or what is being proposed to talk to you guys about here is the services that are for the Regional Transportation Agency of Central Maryland. Mm -hmm. So these services, we have three main routes, and these routes are kind of in the western, northern portion of the county. Which makes sense. Right, yeah. and so they, they pretty much get people from the Odenton area, uh, the Mead Village area, up to um, Arundel Mills Mall. And so that would be route that's the 201, from Freetown to Arundel Mills, the route that's the 202, which is Mead Village to Arundel Mills, along with Fort Mead, and then the 203, which is kind of the Odenton Wad Chapel service. Mm. So that's what we currently have today. And what are some of the changes that we're anticipating for October 1st? So for some of the changes, the 201 route, which is the route that goes from Freetown to Arundel Mills Mall, that route is going to extend. So up around Arundel Mills, there's the Baltimore or the BWI partnership area where there's the industrial areas back there. Yes. Um, Coca-Cola. Everybody knows yeah, Coca-Cola. Coca mm -hmm. Coca <laughs> so Coca-Cola is back there. So there's a, a large um, employment center back there of a multitude of jobs. So the goal for us is, okay, well, what, what happened if we figured out how to extend some of these services past Arundel Mills Mall? Mm -hmm. to where the jobs are. So when I came to talk to you guys earlier, one of the biggest things that we have as far as transit services, how do we get people from where they are to where the jobs are? So one change is to have that route to extend into where those job centers are. Um, Makes sense. Which is gonna hopefully be a big thing for the county. The other change is gonna be for the Route 202. It's gonna pretty much do the same thing. So that route, is also going to come from the Mead Village and um, Fort Meade area in Odenton, and then it's going to extend also to go across Ridge Road, um, Preston Gateway, and all that employment center back there. So what it'll do is it'll basically create, um, I'm creating a network of frequencies to mm -hmm. get people from the mall, which is a big economic mm -hmm. driver, to the workforce area out there, which is another one. So you just kind of create a network that says, all right, well, now you've got more than better opportunities than you had before or quicker opportunities to get from where you live to these employment centers. So those are, those are two big ones. But the biggest one is so we are changing the way that the 203 route ran, which is the one that ran out um, from Odenton to Wachapel. And so we work with the... Uh, MTA, which is the Maryland Transit Administration, uh, mm -hmm. and getting a grant. And this grant was to help us to connect a route from the Odenton Mark Station, which is on the Penn Line, to the um, Savage Mark Station, which is on the Camden Line. So Mark being the regional train. Mm -hmm. And so when this came about, I was like, we just want to connect from you know one train station to another. It's like, well, wait a minute. We've got service that could probably be benefited if you can go through a neighborhood, Piney Orchard, and connect those folks to the Odenton train station because one of the problems that they have is that parking after a certain time period, it's pretty much a lost cause. And then what are people are trying to get to the business parkway? So we basically work with them and this route will be a Piney Orchard route that will go from Piney Orchard, it'll service the Odenton Mark station, it'll go up past Fort Meade and then over to the business parkway and then to the Savage Mark station. Wow. So so now <laughs> you've now you've right you basically just opened up your opportunities for people to get to the business parkway which mm -hmm. is another employment center. But then people can make connections to um, the rail stations as well. And this service will be during peak periods. So these are the periods where people are basically trying to get to work and it will be Monday through Friday. That's kind of how we're starting. Um, benefit is this service will be every 30 minutes. So, you know, one of the issues with transit is either it's the frequency or the coverage. Well, we think we've kind of solved both of those problems here mm -hmm. with this because it has a higher frequency being every 30 minutes and the coverage is basically the span of from the Piney Orchard in the county to the Savage Mark Station by way of Fort Meade and Oakton. Awesome. So 
those are some of the what bigger a project. changes, right? So, <laughs> if, so if we can get those things to kind of connect, so mm -hmm. you've got the 201 and the 202, <clears throat> and then you've got now this 504. So now you've got all these networks that are kind of coming together, but we have basically just retooled it. So it's going to places where we think people want to get to, which right. is cool. to employment locations. So I know every time we eat lunch or every time you're on the show and we <laughs> chat, I learn so much about what you do. Right. Tell us about the transit plan. Tell us actually about the plan itself. So the transit development plan is a plan that is something that has to be done every five years. Mm -hmm. And so because we are partners with the Maryland Transit Administration, we were on our five-year cycle to okay. do a plan. So imagine if we were football players, right? And we need I a like playbook. That. I, can, <laughs> I can imagine I can that for a second. Yeah, so we're football, we were, or we were baseball players, <laughs> right. or even if we were singers. Right? Right. So in, yeah. if, if we had to be any of these things, mm -hmm. nobody just kind of goes mm -hmm. into something and says, you know what, this is what we want to do. Well, you can uh -huh. do that, but of course you want to have, to have right. some supporting data to do that. Right. So what we did starting last year and working in conjunction with Howard County as well as with Prince George's County is we put together a transit development plan. Okay. And what this plan sought to do was to look at how we wanted transit services to look from where it is now to five years from now. Okay. And to do that, you know, you want to put some things in place. Sure. So how we associated that is we went out and we talked to people. Um, we had um, stakeholder meetings. Great. We collected a lot of data. Um, there were surveys that were given out just to kind of get feedback as to what the experience was for the riders mm -hmm. and even for those that weren't riding. Mm -hmm. um, we had meetings with uh, the county administrator as well as the county executive to kind of get a feel as to, you know, what are some of the things that you're hearing or some of the things that we can do to kind of make the service a little bit better. Okay. And so when we did that, um, we collectively were able to put together a couple of different alternatives. Mm -hmm. And so now we're at the, pro of the process of that plan where we've got the alternatives and we're mm -hmm. kind of going through the alternatives to see what fits best. Sure. And so once this is done, we will then take this and we'll say, okay, well, here's what we think is best over a five-year period. It okay. could be the changes in services. Um, it can be providing services that are no longer being utilized. Mm -hmm. um, one example of services that we're looking at for the transit development plan, and I, I misspoke, I didn't speak about this then, but is a demand responsive service that's kind of a flexible route called a call and ride service. Okay. And so what this does is, you know, everybody thinks that mass transit has to be the biggest buses you can find right. with exhaust and noise, and, right. but that's really not what the characteristics of mass transit is. The characteristics of mass transit are basically moving a group of people from one point to another. Hmm. So with the call and ride service, what this allows you to do is if you're a person that qualifies for demand response. Demand response means that you have a physical impairment of such, and so you qualify to use a specialized service that's more curb to curb, mm. right? So instead of you having to stand at a bus stop, right. if you call, I can, I can come a little further mm. to assist you so that you can utilize this service. Nice. So what we're saying is that, okay, well, what if we took a route, right? And it's just like a line, just like a regular route, like the 201 that I referred to, 202, and we said these routes will be the same routes, but we're gonna give it enough time so that it can deviate off of the route. So if mm. I'm a person that needs curb to curb service, mm. then I have the opportunity to call, request mm. a pickup, and that, that route or that mm. service can deviate right. from the line, pick me up, and then come back and still service the regular service that it's doing. That is Amazing. awesome. So, wow. so you, you gave a lot. <clears throat> And, and, and I can tell that you're very involved in the community. How can folks find out more? And how can folks find out where these meetings and these pockets of discussion things happen so they can be more in touch? So, where should they go or call? So right now, um, all of this information is on the county's website. So if okay. you go to the county's website and you go into the transportation section, which will lead you to the Office of Transportation, you'll okay. see everything laid out. Okay. Also, you can go to uh, www.marylandtransit.org. Okay. And this information will also marylandtransit.org. Awesome. Well, thank you so much and congrats. I mean, and thank you <laughs> on all this work that you're undertaking <laughs> right now. It sounds like quite the project. Yeah. Yeah. And we thank you for all the great work you continue yeah. to do here in the county. Thank you for having thank me. You. Thanks for coming back Always on the show. Always a pleasure oh, talking yeah. to you. We'll be right back with more weekend review right after this. Don't go anywhere. 
made her college years possible. Opening that education savings account when she was little, spearheading campus tours, and deciphering financial aid. If you can ace planning for college, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back. My favorite week of the year is Fair Week, and Pat Daly is out there to give us a preview. Pat? Thanks, guys. It's that time of year again. It's the 65th anniversary of the Anne Arundel County Fair, and I'm here with John Kosensky. He's president of the Anne Arundel County Fair Association Incorporated, here to tell us a little bit about the fair this weekend. John, thanks for joining us. First of all, um, how long have you been a part of the association? Uh, I joined in... in 1991. Before that, I was actually a vendor for the Farmers Co-op in Glen Burnie. But um, I just saw a love for it. I came to the fair. I wanted to be a part of it. At the time, I used to think and I couldn't be a part of it because I wasn't. I didn't have land in Anne Arundel County. But to my surprise, you can be a member without being an actual farmer. Great. And I know you put a lot of volunteer hours in, and I know the community appreciates that because the fair is a wonderful opportunity for families to, to be with their families and children. Let me ask you this. Just tell us a little bit of basics about the fair. Give us the hours and, and the basic rates. Um, basically, for this year, children under 9 are free. Anyone over 9 is $7, and that's throughout the whole fair. We do have special event programming. Thursday's Senior Day, so seniors are in free and disabled and military up till 3 p.m., we have um, a Friday special program day for preschoolers, but the fair actually doesn't open its full program until in the evening after four. So the hours really through the week are from four to 10. And um, then on the weekend, we run a lot earlier. So it'll be like from nine to 11. Okay, great. Um, what what can we expect to see when we come to the fair this year? Do, any, do you have any new attractions? What are, the, what are the main attractions? Well, a lot of the main attractions are standbys. We have our pony rides. We have our barns. It's always wonderful to get the education when you come to a show and listen to what judges are looking for on that group of sheep or goats. Um, great thing is, is we have also camel rides. Camel rides, where can you go for a camel ride? We've had them for years here, and every year they are the most popular. Several of our people who come, they just come for the camel rides. They, I mean, the one's been here since it was little, and it's kind of grown up with the fair every year. So people come back every year just to see him. <laughs> are you guys going to have the woodsmith this year? Yes, we will have our antique sawmill working with the Antique Tractor Club of Anne Arundel County. They partner with us to do an actual sawmill. And um, we also have a, as far as a attraction, we have a lumberjack show on the hill. So the lumberjack show is a very good opportunity to see the chainsaw and the log rolling and all that also. And we have our chainsaw artist at the top of the hill also that will be doing carving. Don't tell Dave that. He'll want to play with the chainsaws and the axes right away. Um, I had a question for you. What, you've been involved for so long. What's your favorite attraction here at the fair? My favorite attraction is the chicken and bunny barn. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I tell you, it's just so pleasant to go down there and the chickens are all clucking and everything in the evening after the fair closes. It's nothing to find me walking through there just to clear my mind. And I don't know why. No, I, think I that's my favorite place. I got gotcha. you. Um, are you guys going to have the idol contest this year? We actually have a teen talent this okay. year. We, we call it Arundel's Got Teen Talent. Got We're trying to get some younger people in. They have a lot of talent in Anne Arundel County and surrounding county. And I think that it's going to turn out to be real good. And I believe that's Thursday we'll be doing that. Okay. That's great. Another action-packed year here at the fair. Just one more thing. How can we find out more about the fair? Well, you can go on our website at www.aa, county spelled out, fair spelled out, dot O-R-G. Um, otherwise, you can go to Bones Farm Supply, Co-op, anywhere, Anne Arundel County. All the public libraries should have copies of our catalog with the schedule in it also. What's the best telephone number? It would be 410-923-3400. Great. All right, well, thanks, John. Thanks for being with me today. 
Um, again, don't tell Dave about the axes or the chainsaws. We don't need any kind of uh, craziness from any more craziness from Dave Abrams. All right, thanks guys, back to you. Thanks, Pat. I hope my boy Samson's okay. I'm so sad I don't get to see him Aww. this year. He's my favorite. Yeah, the camels are key. Yeah. I know you look forward to I that do. every year. I do. I love the camels and the kangaroo, baby kangaroo. Again, the, run, the fair runs from now until Sunday night, so please get out there, support this amazing local event, your local 4-H farmers and kids. Get your funnel cake and your mm. hot dogs and deep fried Oreos. Mm. And don't forget the street Chinese food. That's my secret weapon. <laughs> so can you tell me about this deep fried Oreo? I've oh never my gosh. Tried it. it doesn't fit into my diet, but they oh. look absolutely incredible. This, this particular vendor, I think it's a two guys and a girl or something like that. Uh -huh. It's titled something like that. They fry everything. Okay. I mean, Oreos, probably, it's probably one of their most popular things because they're a little more, um, you don't feel as guilty eating something small. So what's the, what's on, what's the batter? It's like, is it... it's fried, like kind of what you find around a corn dog. Okay. Or like a chicken tender. Okay. It is just dipped okay. in batter and then fried. Okay. And then um, they also do like Twinkies. They're doing, I'm trying to remember what else they did last year. That was crazy. A Snickers bar. They had a Snickers bar. Just insane. I feel my sugar numbers going up. Just oh my gosh! To you I know. I'm feeling so. I can sneak a horrible. funnel cake in. I can sneak a funnel cake in, and that's about where I draw the line. That's your favorite that's food about fair. Where I draw the line. Yeah, this yeah. this Chinese Chinese street food fair is yeah, festival yeah. food is where it's at. Um, there's like egg rolls. They make noodles in the wok real quick. Okay. Um, and then they got like kebab, like chicken and oh, uh, okay. rice. Okay, I could do that. It's I really do good. That. That's really good. good. That that's sounds good. Do you have any favorite games or rides when you go to a fair or a carnival or amusement park? Well, you know, I know as a young kid, I used to like to anything where I could shoot the water. Oh, yeah, the know, water gun races. Fill something up. Yeah, yeah. I, that would, I would get a kick out of that. Nice. Because I always felt like I actually stood a chance. Yes. The yes. basketball stuff and some of the other stuff, I would always say, that ball doesn't fit in that ring. So yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, sometimes I'd just leave it alone. No. I remember winning a water gun race once. Yeah. Maybe that's my strength. Yeah. I always really liked, um, if I felt like what you're saying, it wasn't too much of an obstacle, mm -hmm. when they mm -hmm. would sometimes have like jars just lined up, and I'm thinking, if I can throw one thing right. in it lands, yeah, I yeah, can do yeah, that. Yeah, um, yeah. I would do that. I actually just came back from the beach, and we did some uh, a couple, couple rounds in some arcades. Okay. Okay. And I don't know if you know this about me, but I am a pinball fiend. Pinball. I love pinball. Okay. Pinball's my thing. Okay. That's my comfort zone. Yeah, pinball's but good. Yeah, that's good. Pinball's good. Um, awesome. Rides. I really like the ones you'd sit in, and um, it, it's kind of like a merry-go-round, but it goes up in the air. You sat in a little chair, kind of like okay. it looked, I think they call okay. it like the parachute thing. Okay. Or, I like those. Okay. I'm not too crazy on things that go upside down a bunch. No, no, no. no. I don't do upside down. No. 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 no, no, no. Keep it safe. Yeah, we'll keep it. You don't want that funnel cake going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps up this week edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on our Facebook and YouTube by searching Anne Arundel TV. Please tune in next week for more highlights and news from around the county. We'll see you next time. Go to the fair. <laughs> Go for it. Get those, get those fried oysters. Get those fried oysters. <laughs>